Welcome to a tutorial on electronics and today basically we're gonna focus all our attention on the discussion on the breakdown process. Okay, so uh, this breakdown process or the breakdown phenomena basically uh, it uh, takes place in a reverse biased p-n junction. Okay, so I'll just write it down. So it basically takes place in reverse biased p-n junctions. Okay, so now uh, whenever uh, we're having a reverse biased p-n junction, okay, it basically conducts a little, a very little amount of current known as, you know, the leakage, okay, known as leakage current due to the thermally generated free electron and hole pairs whenever a reverse, I mean, a p-n junction is basically reverse biased, okay. So here we have a graph of the diode basically in order to portray this phenomena okay all right so there we go so from this picture that we have brought over here you can basically see that this clearly represents a diode characteristics okay you'll have already come across that in the previous tutorials on p-n junction diodes so you can see that uh, here the current being plotted on the y-axis and the voltage uh, across applied across the uh, p-n junction diode uh, being plotted on the x-axis over here and now to the right hand side of this uh, current axis we have the uh, forward characteristics of the graph and while on the left of this current axis we have the reverse characteristics. So now when we're, whenever we're basically uh, talking or rather discussing about the breakdown process which basically takes place in a reverse biased p-n junction, so this uh, reverse part of the graph will be our main area of interest, okay? So if we just, you know, take for example a uh, reverse biased p-n junction diode over here, okay? So that's not a big deal of a problem, okay? So now we have a reverse biased p-n junction diode and here is the depletion region, okay? So now over here, since it's reverse biased, we need to apply a negative voltage at the p-type side while a positive voltage at the n-type side will just make it reverse biased, okay? So now from this graph we can see that whenever uh, a p-n junction diode is basically in you know, a reverse biased, okay, as I said there would be a little flow of current, okay, flowing from the uh, n-type side to the p-type side, okay, known as the reverse saturation current or also known as the leakage current, okay, and now this leakage current is denoted by the symbol I0, okay, so now a little bit amount of current would basically you know flow uh, in the reverse direction uh, under the applied reverse bias voltage in a uh, in the depletion region in a reverse biased p-n junction uh, diode okay but this condition I, I mean and this uh, current that's the leakage current over here would basically originate due to uh, the thermally generated free electron and hole pairs okay so now this condition will persist okay until a certain time and if we just you know go on increase the uh, I mean if we just you know go forward and keep on increasing the amount of reverse bias voltage then this condition would you know persist till a certain moment and after that at a particular value of reverse bias voltage there would be a sudden surge of electrical current through a reverse biased p-n junction well, that sounds quite unnatural, I know, but it basically happens. So now you can see here in this uh, reverse characteristics of the uh, diode graph over here that the voltage at which this sudden surge of electrical current basically you know, takes place is known as the breakdown voltage. So this particular value of reverse bias voltage at which there is a sudden surge of current flowing through a p-n, I mean a reverse biased p-n junction uh, diode, okay? So here, uh, this particular, uh, you know, the breakdown voltage basically, uh, you know, causes a very high amount of current to flow through at this moment, okay? And now this basically happens, to, I mean the uh, breakdown voltage basically causes a reverse biased p-n junction to conduct a huge amount of electrical current through a reverse biased p-n junction due to the fact that 
And during this time, I mean, at uh, the breakdown voltage, there is basically a rupture of covalent bonds in the, uh, I mean, covalent bonds of the uh, ions that are present within the depletion region. So I'll just illustrate this with this diagram over here. So let's say we have all these, uh, you know, negatively charged acceptor ions on the p-type side, while on the n-type side, we're going to be having all these positively charged donor ions. Okay. So now all this uh, donor and acceptor ions over here, okay, they have, you know, or rather they share covalent bonds with themselves and as well as, you know, uh, nearby silicon atoms, okay. And now since we know that the depletion region is completely devoid of any sort of free charge carrier, so there is no current that is supposed to flow through a reverse bias P injunction. We all know that. But during uh, the time when the breakdown voltage is reached, then these bonds are basically, you know, broken away by, uh, you know, certain breakdown processes and mechanisms that would basically lead to the formation of free electron and hole pairs. Okay, so there you go. We have will be basically having free electron and hole pairs uh, forming within the depletion region due to the reverse bias uh, voltage, you know, causing the rupture of the covalent bonds between the immobile donor and acceptor ions and the nearby silicon atoms. Okay, now this rupture of covalent bond leads to the formation of the free charge carriers that basically take part in this huge current conduction. Okay, and they just behave as the carriers of this reverse current. Okay, so now depending upon our discussion or whatever we've learned over here, we can basically divide the uh, breakdown processes into two categories. One would be the avalanche, or rather uh, this breakdown could basically, basically you know, divide into two different processes or mechanisms. So we have on one hand the avalanche breakdown process and on the other hand we have the Zener breakdown process. Okay, now we can illustrate the differences or rather we can illustrate the two mechanisms, okay, by means of certain diagrams. Okay, so here comes the diagram for the avalanche breakdown process. Now you can see here that in case of the avalanche breakdown process, as I said, what basically happens is that we are, we are basically, uh, you know, having certain uh, little amounts of, you know, thermally generated free electron and hole pairs that obviously, you know, contribute to the uh, reverse saturation or rather the um, leakage current that should flow through a reverse biased P-N junction. Okay, now whenever we're basically applying a reverse bias voltage across that of a uh, p-n junction diode okay basically what happens is that these free or rather thermally generated free electron are basically you know excited or rather imparted with sufficient kinetic energy due to the applied reverse bias voltage and since they are charged particles obviously they'll be uh, you know picking up sufficient amount of kinetic energy and they'll be moving at very high speeds now whenever these uh, fast moving free electrons would basically go and collide with other crystal ions present in the depletion region they'll basically be knocking out electrons from their covalent bonds so as you can see here one of the uh, fast moving free electrons goes and collides with the electron, I mean with one electron that is involved in a covalent bond. Okay, so now here we are having uh, this phenomenon occurring in case of two donor ions in the depletion region of course. And now after this we have the diagram number two which just shows us that uh, the electron with which the fast moving free electron strikes is just knocked out of its position and we have an empty space left over here and a hole is formed. Okay, and the striking electron also continues on its rampage. Okay, so this is exactly what we have in case of the avalanche breakdown process. One free electron goes and collides with others and they just multiply and they collides with many others. So we have from one to two, two to four, four to eight and this process just accumulates, okay, with time. And now in case of the uh, Zener uh, breakdown, we just show this or rather illustrate the process with this uh, diagram over here. Seems a little crunch of space. Okay, no problem. I'll just put it uh, somewhere downwards. Okay, so that's better. 
Okay, so here as we can see that in case of the uh, Zener breakdown process, basically what happens over here is that we have the, uh, you know, the reverse bias voltage applied across the uh, reverse bias, I mean across the reverse bias PN junction. Okay, and now due to this high amount of reverse bias voltage, basically it generates or rather triggers a heavy amount of or rather a very powerful amount of electric field, I mean a very powerful amount of reverse electric field to be precise, okay, in the depletion region. And now this electric field, if it is so powerful enough, okay, then it will basically exert uh, electrostatic forces on the uh, covalently bonded electrons uh, in the uh, depletion region, okay, that exists between the um, immobile donor receptor ions, okay? So now one such uh, applied, powerful applied electric field basically exerts enough force to, you know, drag the electron out of its covalent bond and just set it free as a free electron, okay? Now this free electron just, as you can see over here in diagram number two, one of the electrons is just brought out forcibly and now we have an empty space in the covalent bond, I mean in the position that was previously occupied by this pulled out free electron and thus we have a hole being formed over here. Now this pulled out free electron would basically continue its journey and as such the electric field over here keeps on pulling out or rather just tearing the electrons out of their covalent bonds. Okay, so we have here uh, the two uh, breakdown processes being discussed. Uh, in terms of their basic mechanisms of action, okay. But apart from that, we have certain differences between them as well, which we shall discuss over here by tabulating them right over here. So the very first point of difference between them will be as follows. So here comes difference point number one. There you go. Now it basically states that the avalanche breakdown process is basically an impact ionization process. Well, it is actually true. Now we can see over here that the move fast moving free electron will basically impact or rather cause an impact with the covalently bonded electrons and thereby set them free. So this process of uh, free electron and whole pair generation is known as the impact ionization process. While in the case of the Zener breakdown, the process is totally an electric, I mean an electrostatic rupture. Of course it is. So we can see here this intense amount of electric field basically tears away the electrons uh, in the covalent bond with the other atoms. Now this is basically due to an electrostatic uh, force that de develops on the uh, electrons that are covalently bonded. So it's of course an electrostatic rupture phenomena. Okay, and then we have the difference point number two which states that in case of the avalanche breakdown process, okay, the avalanche breakdown process just, you know, predominates in a wider depletion, I mean in wider depletion regions. Well, this is about to happen. Why? It's because that if we have a comparatively wider depletion region, let's say this is P and this is N, and this part is the depletion region. Okay, so now if we just reverse bias this p-n junction diode over here and now let's say we have an electron existing right over here. Okay, I'll just use a different color. Okay, so now we have an electron existing right over here and now since the uh, depletion region is quite wide then what happens here is that the electron first of all gets enough time to pick up sufficient kinetic energy from the applied reverse bias voltage and on top of that since it gets to travel a wider depletion region so are its chances of colliding with some uh, you know some uh, donor or acceptor ion I mean the immobile ions in the uh, depletion region also increases so a wider depletion region basically ca causes uh, a greater uh, surface area for collision of the free electrons I mean thermally generated fast moving free electrons through the PN junction, I mean through the reverse bias PN junction diodes. Okay, and in the case of the Zener breakdown, it says that it just predominates in case of narrow depletion region. Well, that is also quite natural. It's because since the Zener breakdown phenomena is completely an electrostatic phenomena, okay, so here's our depletion region right here. Let this be P and this be N. Okay, so as I was saying that since the Zener breakdown process is completely an electrostatic phenomena, so 
basically the amount of reverse bias voltage that is applied across a uh, reverse bias p injection diode would basically be intensified or rather the ele reverse electric field generated by the applied reverse bias voltage would basically be intensified if the depletion region is shorter or rather you know smaller in length okay so in a smaller length or rather in a smaller uh, you know uh, width of a depletion region the electric field I mean the value of effective electric field per unit length of the depletion region basically increases and that basically causes a greater chance of the Zener breakdown occurring okay now we'll have point number three okay and now over here point number three states that the magnitude I mean in case of the avalanche breakdown process the magnitude of the av avalanche breakdown process or rather the magnitude of the avalanche breakdown voltage is lower in lightly doped semiconductor p-n junctions it's quite natural it's because if we just go back to point number two as we know that wider depletion regions basically uh, you know predominates in hosting the avalanche breakdown processes now whenever uh, the semiconductor p-n junctions are lightly doped then it's likely to have wider depletion regions and due to this cause as we discussed in the point number two the same uh, I mean due to this particular cause since the avalanche breakdown process predominates over there so we'd have the magnitude of avalanche breakdown voltage lowering in case of lightly doped semiconductor p-n junctions which have wider depletion regions similarly in case of the Zener uh, breakdown it says that the magnitude of the breakdown voltage is lower in heavily doped semiconductor p-n junctions well that is quite natural as in case of narrower depletion regions basically imply that the semiconductor is heavily doped okay it basically has a heavily doped p-n junctions and since the Zener breakdown process predominates over there in case of narrow depletion regions therefore in case of heavily doped semiconductor p-n junctions the Zener breakdown would obviously predominate and that would basically cause the magnitude of the Zener breakdown voltage lowering in case of heavily doped semiconductor p-n junctions okay and now lastly we have the uh, point number four which states that that the uh, in case of the avalanche breakdown voltage okay it basically has a positive temperature coefficient okay now this happens because in case of avalanche breakdown process okay now this particular term means that the avalanche breakdown process uh, I mean the avalanche breakdown voltage basically to be precise rises or rather it just uh, yeah it basically you know uh, becomes uh, greater with increasing temperature while the Zener breakdown uh, has a negative temperature coefficient which means that the Zener breakdown voltage basically you know decreases with rising temperature now this uh, basically implies that in case of the avalanche breakdown process since the number of uh, you know uh, the excited uh, immobile ions would basically increase in magnitude okay uh, due to a higher temperature so they'll just be vibrating about their positions quite you know vigorously and that would basically lead to the avalanche breakdown process basically you know uh, making it just you know impossible to happen so at higher temperatures the avalanche breakdown process uh, you know the breakdown voltage becomes higher as well but well in the case of the Zener breakdown uh, phenomena since it has a negative temperature coefficient we have at higher temperatures you know uh, we'll have basically um, the covalently bonded electrons okay with other atoms basically become you know excited or rather they are ener energetic at higher temperatures so just by applying a, a little amount of reverse electric field it's easier to extract them okay so having said that we just come to the end of our tutorial discussion on the breakdown process so hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and don't forget to watch our next tutorials as well so it's, it'll just be a short goodbye for now and thanks for watching